the Dancing with Wisdom podcast. Hello, and welcome to the Dancing with Wisdom podcast, where we invite you to join us on this quest to make sense of life. Exactly. And it is a quest. It is a quest. And after the first uh, podcast, I've realized that it's probably quite a long quest as well. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> because, right. because so many questions popped up, I think we could have taken that and split it up into uh, a million different podcasts. Well, that's what makes it so fascinating as well, because the more you learn, the more you want to know as well. And it's, it, I find the subject of wisdom, it's very life enhancing and very enriching. Uh, Absolutely. In so many ways. But also emotional. And emotional. As well. Yes. And I'd, I'd like to, um, if it's right with you, Sunil, now, I had the pleasure of producing your audiobook, and if you don't mind me saying so uh, on the podcast, there was an emotional, well, for me as a listener, was there were lots of emotional moments, but there was one particular one which I'd like to bring up. Yes. And today I would like to talk about wisdom of the heart. Yes. <clears throat> and about seven years ago, you had what well, is quite a tragic slash beautiful story to tell. And I wonder if you could just quickly guide us through that story. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that's that goes back to my friendship with Abhishek Banerjee. Uh, Bunty um, was his nickname. And uh, he was a friend who actually I'd, I'd known for about 10 years and he got married and went to Bang, um, to Calcutta in, in, in India. And I would go on visits to India and to Delhi. Uh, where he was living at the time with his wife. And this was in March 2014. I happened to be spending a week in India. And I told Bunty about that. And, you know, Bunty and I have had a, have had a very good friendship while he was in the UK. He was somebody who I... Um, well, he was part of the church that, that we, were, we were a part of. And he had a spiritual awakening um, when he joined that church. And I had the privilege of baptising him as well as he'd come to this rediscovery of his faith. And he was also my technical guy. He helped me with technology. Do you remember those things like little iPods and things like that? And I see. So you didn't have a clue and he helped I, you out on those. Exactly, right? yeah. yeah, I so, just, yeah. so tell us about um, when you went to visit him. Yeah, so what would happen was that um, Bunty would say to me that when you come to India, make sure that um, I'll be your taxi driver and I'll take you around and, and we, we can hang out together and things like that. And I spent... Well, I was a week visiting family. I was doing some teaching in Delhi. And I met with him on the evening of the Saturday 15th of March. And, you know, we had a long conversation till late at night. And I said goodbye to him. And he said a very strange thing to me. He said to me, Sunil, when you get to England, I want you to ring me. And I said, Bunty, that's weird. Because I'm going to arrive in England at six o'clock on Sunday evening. Um, and that's going to be late for you. And so I probably won't be able to ring you after midnight. And he said, no, no, I want you to ring. Well, I, I knew it was a na night owl, so I tried to ring. When I got to England, I rang him, but he didn't pick up. Sunday morning, he he uh, he rang me, and I uh, rang him back. He'd also done some strange things. He'd, he'd given um, the gift of an SLR camera to my daughter, to one of my daughters, um, because I told him about how she was fascinated with photography. And I was sort of saying, you don't need to do this kind of stuff. And anyway... So I had a conversation with him and then I, I got, I, I chatted to him on a, on a Monday morning and then uh, I got my daughter to, to, to speak to him, say thank you for the camera and to go over the details about the camera. And then she put the phone down and I thought that's not right. So I thought, oh, I need to ring back. And I'm so glad I did ring back. I rang back and we exchanged some pleasantries and said, you know, let's keep in touch. It's not easy. You're in India, I'm in England. We've got busy lives, but we'll make a point of that. And then on the evening of the of uh, the 17th of March, at about eight o'clock, I got a phone call that you never want to get. His wife rang me and her words were, if somebody's heart's not beating for three hours, can they still be alive? That was her first words to me. And I was, what are you talking about? And she was rambling and going here. And then she basically said to me, I'm here in the hospital. Uh, Abhishek is here. Uh, the doctors are not giving me a straight answer and the police are here. And then it hit me that he'd actually died. And that completely rocked my world. And you guys were really close. We were, we're very good friends. Yeah, yeah very, very, good, very friend. good friends. And I should happen to be in India in the last week of his life in the providence of God. I mean... And I know you dedicate your book to, to the Bunky, book is, of Yeah, course. the book is dedicated um, to him, yeah. And... And I'm guessing as well, you had a share of a love of Star Wars, perhaps? 
there's something you there's so? something yeah, well, in there well, it pops he, he up likes there's a yoda sci-fi. yeah well he, he likes sci-fi and he was into lord of the rings and into sort of you know this sort of existential questions that these kind of movies and these kind of books bring up certainly okay. we had we had a lot of heart conversations about the meaning of life and making sense of life and so from things an like emotional that. yeah from an emotional point of view now so so obviously you are already on your quest for wisdom at this point. Well, uh, yes. Now on the on a day to day basis, people go through emotional things. People have lost, especially at the moment with COVID. Yes. That, you know, every day. Just, yeah, just, that's just, right. Just, we're we're brought amount. face to face with death. Very, okay. Yeah. So how can we be wise to the heart? What did you do? Were you wise to the heart? Did it take you time? What does it even mean to be wise to the heart? Well, I think. <laughs> This is really important because obviously intellectually we know that that our life here on earth is finite, that we're not going to live forever on this earth. Intellectually we know that um, our life has consequences and that it's important that we make wise decisions and we uh, live in in a way that um, is ultimately going to be good for us. But Bunty's death hit me for six in a way like nothing else. You know, it was like a defining moment in my life. When on a new level, I had to question, what am I living for? What are my priorities? Are the choices I'm making, are they wise choices? How do I, you know, how do I cope with the meaninglessness of life? You know, a a man who was just 32 years of age, who appeared to have everything going for him, should suddenly go like that. Um, And then obviously questions, you you, you question, you know, what am I living for? Um, Am I living with a bigger picture of life? Um, I've struggled with depression and burnout in my life and at times, yeah, and struggled as well at times thinking, you know, uh, does my life have meaning or purpose? Um, how do I, you know, battle on with these negative feelings that I've got? And I think I've, you know, I've, I've at times I've felt that I've been a past, you know, life's not even worth living in, you know, just going back many, many years and I've spoken to patients and clients who have felt suicidal and, you know, when something like that hits you for six, you then question, this life is really important. It's fragile. It can go at any moment. There are so many things that we're not in control of. Um, we need to make wise choices. So is this at this point, is this a time when you need to seek your feelings within? You need to be listening to your inner self. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, it's because you mentioned about um, depression yeah. and stress. And, and it actually it popped up the other day. So I'm, I'm part of a, um, like a, an entrepreneur group right. called BBB, um, Bigger, Bolder, Better. And, and, and they're great. And something that popped up yesterday was um, the chap who runs it, uh, George Swift, his name is a really great guy. He said, make sure in your day when you're planning out your business, you make sure you have your breaks. Yes. You make sure you have your breaks. And it really resonates with me because sometimes I go back to back yes. because I care so much. Yes. All right. So now this is the point, okay? I care so much. Mm. Am I caring about me at the same time? Yes. Am I being wise to me? And and he says, like, when you're at school, you, you do your work, then you have your break. Then you mm. have your play time and you have your lunch yes. break. You have to do that because otherwise what it effectively lead to, can lead to is illness, to depression, to stress, all those words we hear yes. a lot about. And perhaps a lot of that could be avoided if we're just a little bit more wise, have a little bit more wisdom to our yes. self, self-care. self Yes. So you're talking about wisdom regarding self-care, which is absolutely vital because, you know, we live in a world that's 24-7. You know, the, 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 there are no boundaries between work and the rest of life unless you make those boundaries. But we're not created to function 24-7. We need, as you're talking about breaks, we are, we are not machines. We're not human doings. We're human beings. And being precedes doing. And the whole point here really is thinking about body, mind, and spirit. I'm all of those, those things. Um, and we live in a world that's so cynical and so, not just complex, but, but so confusing and is searching for answers and again you know going back to bunty's death it made me think this life i've got is precious i want to make the most of every single day i want to make the most of every minute of every single day and i've you know i've made choices in my life that have met, left me feeling you know dissatisfied discontented 
down, <laughs> depressed. Well, this is why I brought yeah. it up, though, Sunil, because yes, you, yeah. you you mentioned quite rightly that what I mentioned, I just sidestepped and was talking about wisdom yeah. of sort of self-care. Yeah. But you were saying, I mean, how old was Bunty? 32. 32. So let's just say we follow those rules and we do self-care. Yeah. But well, then something like that happens at 32. Yeah, exactly. You just do, and you just do self-care. So, so the issue is self-care is really important. You know, getting enough sleep, making sure that you have breaks and exercise and all those things. But the point is, it's in the bigger picture of the one who's created us and what's going to happen. You know, we live in a very cynical world, secular world that says uh, you live and you die and then you just disappear. You just, that's it, the end of existence. And when something like tragic as Bunty's death happens, you think if this life is all there is and there's nothing more, if there's no other greater narrative, then it's all meaningless. What am I living for? And that hit me on a new level. Either, I think it was, I can't remember, somebody said, either this life is an, an amazing adventure or it's nothing at all. And if it's nothing at all, then that means I've just got to cram everything into this experience, into this life. And I could just go just like that. That doesn't make sense to me. And yet, you know, we are able to do such amazing things. We've got so much great opportunities. There's so much suffering in the world. I genuinely believe, I sincerely believe that there is much more to what we can see, touch, hear and feel and that there is a bigger purpose. And that's in a sense why I'm fascinated by the subject of wisdom, because it's trying to find out what the bigger narrative is. And unfortunately, you know, our cynical world doesn't want to know that story. Well, I think deep down we all know that at, at a level. Yes. I think deep down... Well, we don't we... live... Yeah, exactly. We would never live with that. You're absolutely right. We would never... Nobody lives their their life thinking it's meaningless. And yet we say, we hear it in the media, in the popular culture, oh, just, you know, just be true to yourself and it, 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 all, it all doesn't matter. But none of us would live that way. But the other thing as well, if you take people who are in that stage of what's the point? Life is meaningless. Let's just say mm. for, for now, this isn't an area that I know, you know, you're a professional. Yeah, sure. I don't know this area, but so, excuse me, I'm going by what just yeah, rounded go, yeah, off. Yeah. yeah. So let's just say, you know, you've got depression. You're thinking, what's the point? Yeah. Life is meaningless. Like that. Yes. What's happened is you've taken away almost like a core value. Yes. Okay. Because deep down we, we all live with that there is an ultimate purpose. Yes, yes. Whether you v- uh, vocalise it or not, yes. we're kind of living like that. Deep down, we can't, I think, I believe that we do truly feel that. But yeah. the impact that it has on people, if you take that one thing away. Yes. So how can you be wise? How can you have wisdom to carry that greater picture with you on a day-to-day basis, Sunil? Ultimately, I think you've got to have a bigger perspective on on your life. Um, and for me, that's come through a living relationship with God. So we're back to religion again. We're back to which faith, we, yeah. which we meant, Which we mentioned the first we one. And we are going to do, and do you know what? I think we say one podcast, I think it's probably going to expand. Yes. Okay, but please carry on. Well, I think, yeah, you've got to have, you've got to be living with something greater than yourself. And ultimately, I think it's living with a living relationship with God, that, he's a no, that he is knowable. And I had a spiritual awakening when I was about 19 that brought me to a, 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 to a relationship with, with Christ. Um, and in a sense, he has become my wisdom. He is my wisdom. Um, so what you're saying there is religion. Now, now we have to point out, those, obviously, um, with yourself and myself as well as Christianity, um, that, and other people have different, different faith different views. Faiths. Or no, yeah. But I think the key, the key issue we've got to make is, is that you've got to find meaning in your life. Yes. If you don't have meaning, then everything falls apart. And I, we would argue that the more explicit and clear you are about that meaning and purpose, the more fulfilling your life will be. Mo- most people aren't clear about that. And that's why they get, end up in a spiral about going downward. So I'll give you a classic example. You know, one of my heroes is a guy called Viktor Frankl. And he was a Jewish psychiatrist who went through, who survived the concentration camp in, in Nazi Germany. Now, you know, however bad your life is, I doubt if it's as bad as that. And one of the things that he came across in that experience in the, in the concentration camp was this realisation that if you have a big enough why, if you have a big enough meaning or purpose, you can survive anything, even the horrors of the concentration camp. And so what he would do is he would create an oasis in his mind where he would begin to ask himself, although I've got no actual freedom and I've got these, you know, these, these Nazi guards who can do terrible things to me, there is a part of me that no one can touch unless I give them permission. And so he began to look for a 
bigger meaning and purpose. So he began to ask himself, what am I learning from this experience? What will I teach my students when I get out? And in a sense, he developed that bigger meaning and purpose. And that's what got him to survive. And he noticed that those prisoners who didn't have a bigger meaning or purpose were the ones who died. They were the ones who couldn't survive. But the ones who had a greater and deeper ones, they were the ones who managed to get through. And then what's fascinating about him was that after World War II, he then went to Vienna and started a psychiatry clinic hospital. And he managed to get the suicide rate down to practically zero. Wow. By developing what he called logotherapy, which is, and he's written a famous book called Man's Search for Meaning, uh, which is a classic, which very much expounds this issue, is that we are meaning-seeking creatures. Now, I think what we're trying to say here is, and you're right, you know, people who are watching or listening, they have also, you know, different faith views and different ideas about life. You've got to be clear about what your meaning and purpose is, because the clearer you are on that, the more you can walk and live. So in this sounds like an exercise here. So I've, I've got a book here. Yeah. And a wise thing, would you say that a wise thing to do would be like, right, I have just gone through this. Yeah. I've just gone through a, and I'm going to actually spend some moments just writing down what that means to me, what I've learned from that. That's a start. What I, mean, I could do. I mean, because, but how do, because how do people do that? You see, because people, I think people need the education, the education of how to, to put that into practice. Yes. I mean, again, we said in, we said in podcast one, didn't we, about we are the most under-reflective and over-informed generation society in the history of the world because we have so much information coming at us and you've got to stop and pause. You know, you've got to step out of the traffic. You've got to step out of all the noise and look, you know, Look at, look at your own, you know, the, the unexamined life is not worth living. You've got to examine your own life, but also begin to seek out where are those sources of wisdom? Well, we're discussing like wisdom of the heart. Yeah. And we've discussed um, uh, loss and um, everything that you described, what you went through and yeah. what people do go through, go, come from, comes from within. Yeah. It's something that's within, which yeah. makes me think, so wisdom, okay, is actually if you crack the shell and go inside, wisdom is sort of within us. It is, is to an, well, it because... is to a point, but it needs external revelation as well. So yes, it's in a sense. Because when it, something it, it, hurts, it hurts oh, from within. It hurts from within, and yes. and and pain and suffering. You know, uh, it it raises big big questions. Um, I think it was it Lewis who said is is that pain is the megaphone by which uh, God, which God uses to to wake up a, a deaf world. Okay. And, okay. and so it, so there is that. Exp- but we need external revelation as it were. And, you know, you and I have come to that revelation through knowing God through the biblical scripture um, and different people are on different journeys. But that's, in a sense, that conclusion that we've come to. Well, it, I'm going to tie something in here because we've, we've talked about the loss, but let's talk about the most powerful emotion. There is, and that love. Love, yes. Yeah? Now, when you, when you love... Now, I, I'm going to get a little bit soppy here. I remember the, the first time I, I told my wife I loved her <laughs> and I had no choice but to say it. It was bursting. It was right. bursting to say it, you yeah. see. It had been for a long time, but that precise moment, I had to say it. And it's a wonderful feeling. It's a wonderful feeling. And and something that I do now in, in a very busy, sort of successful business that, that you're running them and it takes a lot of time, I, I'm wise. Something I've learned is to be wise in reminding myself of the values of at home and my family and everything like that. That's that's so I'm constantly teaching myself, reminding myself to be wise, to have wisdom within that. Yes. You see. So when it comes to love, do you think that perhaps in in a, a neg sometimes a negative world, do you think that we need to be a lot wiser and have wisdom to sourcing the love from within and externally? That's a fascinating area because and I'm going to challenge you a little bit here as well. Don't challenge me because I'm here to challenge you. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I'm sort of getting at really is love is a fascinating subject. I mean, in some sense, you could argue in a sense, love is foundational to wisdom. But what is love, you see? So again, we're conditioned to think of love as that sort of romantic, soppy feeling. Okay. And it certainly can start like that. But love comes at different levels. And so... For example, you know, I've been married for 30 years and I had a certain love for my wife when we, when we married and there was a lot of intense emotion and, and you know, experience on, on, on that side. But as, you get, as time goes on, 
love becomes much more than a feeling. It becomes a decision and an active choice of the will that I'm going to love you and commit myself to you for the rest of my life through, you know, as we say in the marriage vows, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health. And so that love gets deeper and becomes much stronger and much greater than our feelings. Because, you know, at times, yeah, I mean, in every marriage, you find yourself, you get irritated with each no, other. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> but the, but, the, but the, truth, the truth is, though, as well, is that um, I actually believe that you're saying about the deeper and it gets more deeper. But I think we have to be careful there. Yeah, go on, yeah. All right, when, because you could say, oh, we're getting deeper and deeper, which means we're suddenly having deeper conversations and, and yeah, we've got more things to think about. But I think that we, I think for the listener, what, I, I, I believe that being wise within a marriage, a relationship, yes. as it goes on, is to remind yourself of the core values of what brought you together. Yes. Because let's just say, like us now, we are no different to when you're younger. I remember being younger, thinking, "When oh, 18, that's really old, really old." 18, you get to 18, like 21 is really yeah, old, yeah, and it goes yeah. on and on and on. The truth is, you don't you grow in through wisdom and experience, but you're still that that person. But, yes, that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. But so yes. so we're very really good at putting masks on our faces, but underneath, we're yeah, correct. that's right. Yeah. And you're laughing, and you're laughing, and you're joking in a new relationship. Yes. You need to remind yourself what they are. Yeah. and because you're still that same person so if it was a case yeah. of going to comedy together and having a good old giggle yes. and a pint yeah. then that then if that's what really gets you going then you go and do that again because that hasn't actually changed it's just along the way yes. other things have you, you got older and, and other things come you've, to you've life. got more experience and maybe you learn that maybe that's not a good thing to do or a good thing to say hopefully you get wiser and I, th- I suppose that's I think this is one of the things that actually quite unnerving about wisdom because it does involve a conscious choice and a decision. So, yes, we're going to get older, and obviously, you know, children become adult, become young adults, and get older. So, physically, we age and grow. But wisdom is not automatic. You know, I've I've always been <laughs> challenged by a quote, which is that there's a world of difference between thirty years of experience and one year of experience repeated thirty times. Hmm. It's a world of difference, because in the second case. You're not learning. You're, you know, they say one definition of insanity is doing the same thing again and again, expecting a different result. And what you, no- what you notice is that people who maybe don't live with wisdom, they go through one relationship after another relationship. You know, they start off with one relationship and it goes really well and they're all madly in love and it's all amazing. And then something happens and it cracks and they go to the next person. They go to the next person. Mm. Or, you know, I've seen it in terms of... Um, with church circles, you know, people who go to a particular church and they think it's amazing and then they last a year or two and then suddenly they have a blowout with with their church leadership or with somebody in the congregation and they go to another church, they go to another church, they go to another church yeah, yeah, because yeah. they're not living in wisdom. Because one of the big things about wisdom is realising is the problem's not out there. Yes, there are problems out there, but really the fundamental problem starts with me. You know, okay. there, there's a famous uh, story about um, G.K. Chesterton. Uh, they, they, in the Times, there was a, um, they, they asked the question, what's wrong with the world? And apparently G.K. Chesterton wrote back with just two words. He said, you know, he wrote to the Times and said, what's wrong with the world? I am. Yours sincerely, G.K. Chesterton. Interesting. <laughs> the whole point is realising that I'm the one who's got the maximum control of myself. I can't change other people. Um, but I can make a choice to make wise decisions. Well, let's leave it there. I think that is um, that is a podcast. We're going to write that down straight after this one. I'm going to write that down and we're going to go on there. Making our own decisions. Yes. Is interesting. Um, okay, so wisdom of the heart. Uh, obviously, we're going to explore these in much more detail down the line. We can pin, uh, pick at it. Um, but summarize for me. Wisdom so what we've looked at is, in a sense, we've started very foundational because wisdom is not about information and knowledge. It's very intellectual. Okay, It's about engaging with our entire being. And we are guided and governed by emotions much more than we, than we realise. We like to think that we're rational and logical, but actually emotions impact us a lot. And I shared, you know, in a sense, what was a very pivotal moment in my life when my good friend Abhishek Banerjee Bunty, who, the book's de- who my book uh, Dancing with Wisdom is dedicated to, uh, his sudden death at the age of 32, how it not just rocked my world, but made me really think, what does it mean to walk in wisdom in a world that's so cynical, complex, and that's so much governed by the latest and loudest. How can I live in the light of eternity and really make my life make a difference for the one who who sees and knows all things? 
Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, it's been some great content today. Thank you ever so much. The, um, I invite everyone to just start asking themselves, what does wisdom mean to them? Yeah. What does wisdom mean to them? And if something happens in your life, just see, you know, what, where is the wisdom in this? How yes. can I seek that out? And it's asking those questions and exploring it that's so yeah. vital. And that's what we're doing right here. Yeah. So if you do have a, a question um, and you're watching on YouTube, then you can uh, leave your comments below. And of course, um, do tell your friends and you can email us directly. How do we get hold of you, Sunil? So yeah, just at the website, drsunil.com, you can go there. And you can get hold of me, Elliot, two L's, two T's, Elliot at monkeynutuk.com. Of course, you can get us both um, on the Monkey Nut um, Instagram and Facebook post. And also um, do leave us a nice review. Um, nice words, please, only. <laughs> and uh, let us know your thoughts. Let us know your questions. We want to explore with you. What is it that you'd like us to explore? Sunil, thanks so much. Thanks so much. You've been listening to the Dancing with Wisdom podcast, presented by Sunil Rahija and Elliot Frisby. For details on the Dancing with Wisdom book and its accompanying workbook, please visit drsunil.com. If you know someone who would enjoy this podcast, then please share it, give it a thumbs up on YouTube, and help it to grow by giving it a nice review. Life's challenges can diminish, define, or develop you. Which one will it be? Make sure you hunger for the wise one. The choice is yours.